Hey guys, I am so excited to make these freezer meals. This is a pre-recorded class, so if you want the freebie with all of the recipes, the shopping list, the labels, click the link in the description below and I'll send it to you via email. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. I am Kelly from The Family Freezer and I'm so excited to show you how to make freezer meals for two. <laughs> Are you an empty nester who's looking for a shortcut for making healthier dinners? Do you like the idea of freezer meals and need an extra push to get started? Have you attended one of my other classes and you just wanted to come back and get more recipes? If so, this is the class for you. <laughs> I'm so excited. After class, I will send you this freebie. It has all of the super simple recipes, a full grocery list organized by aisle at the grocery store, even the labels that you can print and attach to your bag. So I printed mine on sticker labels, but you could also do regular computer paper attached with clear shipping tape. All the info is in that freebie that's coming to you after class today. Now today's class is going to be an hour or less and I hope you can stay until the end because I'm gonna share a coupon code if you wanna join my membership site and I'm also gonna do a quick demo of the site. If you haven't seen it, it's one of a kind. It's so amazing for my style of freezer meals and if you're a member and you're, and you're attending the class today, I hope you can see it too. It just gives you a little refresher and shows you how I use it to plan my freezer meals. It has so many good features. But I think at this point we're ready to get started. So let's go into recipe number one, which is low fat, all natural chicken noodle soup. Yum. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you how this works. So my normal recipes have four to six servings and I had a blog post that went viral back in 2015. And the number one question was, how can I adapt these recipes for less people? And I have a very simple answer and I'm just gonna spend this whole class just really walking you through, showing you how easy it is to make it for less people. So what I'm doing is I am using my regular recipes, my four to six serving recipes, but I'm splitting them into two freezer bags. And why that's amazing is one, we're gonna use all the ingredients. So I just put in a cup of diced onions, which is equivalent to about one diced onion. So we're using the whole onion. You're not gonna be left with half an onion. You don't know what to do with it. And you're gonna end up with double the meals. So our second ingredient is diced celery. I bought pre-diced celery just to save time. I hate buying big things of celery because it never gets eaten in my house and it goes to waste. So the recipe calls for about a cup of celery. I'm just gonna split it between the two bags. We are eyeballing everything here today. <laughs> no stress, super simple. And our carrots. Now I bought a one pound bag of carrots and we're just gonna split it between our recipes today. This one calls for half a pound, about four carrots. I pre-cut mine before class because I didn't wanna turn my back to you. I didn't wanna be peeling at my sink. But I'm gonna go ahead and add them. I'm gonna add about a cup, about a cup each to each bag. Now I can tell you that making meals for two is just something I've dealt with myself. So there were years ago when my grandparents were living alone, they weren't cooking a lot and I wanted to make some meals for them. So what I did is I took my own recipes, I picked 10 of my favorites I thought they would enjoy and then I split them into two bags each. So I ended up giving them 20 freezer meals, which made me feel so good and then they just cook them in a smaller slow cooker. And I'll show you a little later in class some examples of smaller slow cookers you can use, also a smaller Instant Pot. We have Instant Pots today, so I'll show you how to do that. We do have those directions with this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt. You don't have to worry about the amount. This is one teaspoon that I'm splitting between two bags, but I would say for the class, just relax, just enjoy watching me do it. And then whenever you're making the meals yourself, then you can actually read the recipes and get the exact measurements. I just added some thyme. I'm also going to add celery seed and turmeric. These are so delicious in this chicken noodle soup. I recently made all these. So these are all recipes I've written on myself. They've been on my website, my membership site, my cookbooks, <laughs> online, like peop other people have tried them too. But I just recently made them all again myself so I could test cooking them in smaller slow cookers. I tried two different ones and I tried a um, smaller Instant Pot to make sure all the cooking instructions would be perfect. So I did that, we got to eat them all again. They're so good. I know you're gonna love them. 
And I do have some testimonials for you. So this one, this recipe is on my membership site. And I just wanted to read some of the comments that they put below the recipe because do you like to do that too? <laughs> Whenever I'm making a new recipe, I always read what everyone else does. So Linda wrote, this was absolutely delicious. I wouldn't change a thing. And then Patricia said, made this last night fresh and also made another one to freeze. It turned out so good. I used the Instant Pot for 20 minutes with the natural release, then added the egg noodles on the saute, mo saute mode. We are definitely keeping this in the rotation. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks, Linda. That's a good note about the noodles. So we're going to freeze this just with the veggies, the spices, the meat. And then the day of cooking, we'll add the broth and then we'll even add the egg noodles directly to the crock pot or the instant pot. It's so good. It's like a one pot meal and it just makes it easier to freeze. They're small meals and it's easier. You don't have to thaw it with all the broth and just makes it like super simple. So I'm using gallon size bags. You could also use quart size. I'll tell you more more about that, but I think we're ready to move on because I'm going to add all of the meat at the end. I'm going to interrupt myself for one minute to tell you about our Family Freezer VIP site. If you're ready to change your life with my style of freezer meals that can be frozen raw, a membership to our VIP site will be your best friend. I see VIP as the most expansive collection of easy and healthy freezer recipes online and the tools you need to actually make them work in your life. With VIP, you can filter all of my healthy freezer recipes based on protein, keyword, cooking method, diet, and more. You can even combine filters to drill down on the exact type of meals that you want to make. These are delicious meals that are, you are going to love sharing with your family and friends. You can auto-generate shopping lists that you can print or save to access later on your phone. One of my favorite features of VIP is a full class library with videos of all of the cooking classes that I've taught over the past three years that you can watch on demand and download the freebies. I honestly think everyone can benefit from freezer meals, whether you're making them every week, every month, or even every few months. We have tens of thousands of members worldwide, and if you want to join us, just go to thefamilyfreezer.com slash VIP and enter this coupon code to save 20% off the sign-up fee. I'm gonna go ahead and do the veggie sauces, spices now. We'll leave the meat in my refrigerator until I'm ready for it. So meat number two is this tangy tomato pot roast. So good. <laughs> if you, this is not your average pot roast, it's even better. You're going to love it. I'm really excited for you to try this one. I've never shared this one before. It is on my membership site, but it's brand new. So get excited. This is like pot roast uh, elevated. Really, really good. So I'm adding some minced garlic. And then I'm gonna add fire roasted tomatoes. The recipe calls for a can of fire roasted crushed tomatoes. I actually couldn't find that when I just went to the grocery store, so I'm doing the fire roasted diced tomato. Same thing, I definitely do the fire roasted ones, just add some great flavor. And then we need some tomato paste. And I'm gonna share a tip with you. So I bought this tube of tomato paste. And if you've only bought the cans in the past, I really do recommend buying the tube because none of it goes to waste. Don't you hate when you buy a can and you're like, what do I do with the rest of this can of tomato paste? <laughs> it's the worst. So now I always buy these, these tubes and then you just store this in your refrigerator. So you always have tomato paste on hand. You don't waste your money, you don't waste your tomato paste. Our next ingredient is balsamic vinegar. And we need to add two teaspoons, so I'm splitting that between my bags. I'm gonna do one teaspoon in one bag, another teaspoon in another bag. If you are brand new to me, hi, <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Maybe you saw a video on Facebook or something and decided to take a chance. I am so glad that you did. Um, welcome to my kitchen. I just realized I'm not wearing my apron. Can you grab one of my aprons in our room? <laughs> I went to wipe my hands. I always wear an apron when I'm cooking and I went to wipe my hands on my apron and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm gonna wipe my hands all over my clothes. <laughs> so let me go ahead and just keep adding our ingredients. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. So I'll tell you about the aprons too. My mom actually made these. So she 
has seen me make freeze meals. We've gotten together in the past and made like 20, 30, 40 freezer meals together. And I used to use a whole roll of paper towels or I would just use um, like all these towels and just <laughs> make such a mess. And my mom said, what if I took a towel and I attached it to your apron and you just always had a towel with you as you went. And so what I was looking to do was actually wipe out my teaspoon so I could keep using it. So these, my mom actually opened her own Etsy shop because so many people were asking about these. So the link is in your freebie if you want to get one. She's only one person. She can only make so many, but she has been adding more to her Etsy shop. I know people love them. So this is just really helpful when you're making the meals. I just added just a tiny bit of sugar to each bag. It's just a really nice, really nice um, addition to the tomato. It makes it a little less sour. So now we're going to add olives, Kalamata olives. These are pitted. We had a third of a cup. We're gonna split that between the bags. It's about maybe like six olives per bag. I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball this and split it between the bags. If you're an olive lover, these are so good in the pot roast. If you're not, like my husband and my kids, they'll just pick around the olives uh, more for you, no problem. All right, we did the olives. We have to add a little bit of salt. And I wanted to tell you just a little bit more about me if you if this is the first time we're meeting. So I started making these meals 10 years ago. <laughs> I can't believe it's that long. But at the time, I had two daughters. Um, my One was a baby, one was two years old. And I just remember feeling like I had no time. I mean, I was working, taking care of my kids, trying to do laundry, keep the house kind of clean. I was tr trying to cook dinner. And I felt like I had no time for the things I really wanted to be doing. So I'm really good at organizing. And I thought, how can I apply that to dinner? And I thought, well, I've been making these crock pot meals and they go in the crock pot raw. What if I just put them in bags, froze them raw and cook them later for dinner? And it was like this light bulb went off. So I started having all these images. Oh my gosh, if I didn't have to cook dinner at night, then I could visit my grandparents after, after work, or I could take my kids outside to play. I could sit down with my husband and ask him about his day. I could do a quick workout. I mean, I had these <laughs> dreams. It was like my life was going to change if I had one extra hour in the day. So that weekend, I went to the grocery store. I got the ingredients for five recipes. That, I think it took me 45 minutes to put them together. The next week we ate them every night for dinner and just like changed my life. Like it was amazing. And so that's what happened. And I mean, fast forward 10 years, I now have five kids. This is still working for me. Like this is something that can work for any stage of life. I'm sure you're busy. I'm busy. Everybody's always busy, right? <laughs> it never ends. But this is something that just works over time. It's just a shortcut for making healthy homemade budget friendly meals. And I found that not only do I need this, so many other people do. So our, this has turned into like a full business for me and my husband. We now have over 350,000 people who get our free email newsletters. So like when I'm at my computer writing you a recipe, 350,000 people are getting those emails, which is just like mind blowing. We have over 60,000 people who have joined our membership site. I know a lot of people are here today. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you. We've sold over a million dollars in cookbooks. We have been on todayshow.com, buzzfeedfood.com, Costco connection, so many places. And it's just so amazing. Not only because it's like changed our lives, like personally, um, professionally, but just thinking about how we've been able to help other people too, that like, it's not just me who needs a shortcut. There's a lot of other people out there. So I thank you. And I think we are done with this pot roast. I'll tell you just what I added while I was talking. Um, I added after the olives, I just added salt, oregano and red pepper flakes. The red pepper flakes are optional. I say optional, but I would add them. They're not super spicy. I think they give it a really great flavor, but that's always an option. I want you to make make meals that you are gonna love to eat. 
Our recipe number three, which we're splitting in the two bags, is beef barley stew. <laughs> this is a good one. Um, I, so I just made this again to test it in the smaller crock pot, an instant pot, and my dad had it, and he was like, I love beef barley, it's so good. <laughs> Who knew? I didn't know he was such a fan, but he loved it, we really love this recipe. And what I'm doing is adding those diced carrots that I had diced, and when I picked these recipes, I purposely picked ones that would use the entire pound of carrots. So nothing's going to waste. I used all of them. I'm also going to add celery. So you, the recipe calls for about a cup of celery or two diced celery ribs. I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and add whatever's left in this container. I honestly don't want anything to go to waste. These recipes are so forgiving. It's really hard to mess them up. You don't have to be good at cooking. Trust me, they're still gonna be so good. So we added the celery, and then we have to add an onion. Now, instead of using fresh onions today, I'm using these pre-diced onions. This was frozen. It cost $1 at my local grocery store. I think it's totally worth it. <laughs> If you know me, I hate dicing onions, I hate crying over them. So I just buy this one dollar, it has about three and a half onions in it, and we're gonna use the whole thing in these meals. So I just added a cup, which is about one onion, split it between the bags, and then we're gonna add our seasonings, which are thyme, rosemary, salt, pepper, and a bay leaf. I wanna tell you a little bit about what sets these recipes apart. So first, they are all frozen raw. I mean, you're seeing me combine the ingredients in these bags, and I am combining all the veggies raw. We're doing the seasonings, the sauces. I'm going to put all the meat in raw, everything. <laughs> and what that does is just save so much time. So maybe you've seen other people online who are making 30 freezer meals at once and they're spending all Saturday and all Sunday and their kitchen looks like a bomb went off and their sink is overflowing. <laughs> and you're thinking, I can't do that. <laughs> at least that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I can barely find an hour to teach a class. There's no way I could devote like a whole weekend. It's just too much, too overwhelming. So when I make freezer meals, I really focus on keeping them simple. They're all frozen raw. That means we're maybe spending an hour and we're able to freeze a bunch of meals and they cook for the very first time. They taste like a freshly prepared meal, which is great. So everyone wins, wins all around. Um, and they're, like I said, all really simple. I always pick ingredients that you can find at your local grocery store, normally 10 ingredients or less. I care about them being healthy. I'm not gonna be adding any soda pop. I don't, tr I try not to use a lot of like pre-made dressings or anything. I just try and keep these healthy. If I can include fresh, fresh veggies, I do. I really want you to feel good serving these with, to your family or to yourself if you're eating them yourself. I think, I think everyone wants to eat healthy and, and knows that they feel good when they do. So I go ahead and added the salt. We'll add some pepper. Make sure I add the right one. Where is the pepper? Oh, here it is. So speaking of adding raw, I am even going to add the raw barley. It's the dried barley. Trust me, you can do it. You might not be used to adding, <laughs> adding things raw to your freezer bags or to your crock pot or instant pot, but it works. I would not give you recipes that I hadn't tried many, many times myself. Now this recipe calls for half a cup of barley. That works out to a quarter cup in each bag. We're just gonna go ahead and add it. There we go. And, oh, this was a recipe from my membership site. Katie said, this recipe is delicious. My kids love it. Clar and Clarissa said, my kids love this. We'll be adding it to the rotation. So it sounds like this is a recipe the kids like too. If you do have kids, you'll be good with this one. If you have grandkids and you cook for them, this would be a hit. I think this really is like a, a family please, or like a crowd pleasing recipe. Recipe number four is our lemon chicken with baby spinach. I love this recipe, and it calls for fresh baby spinach. It's a five ounce bag, I just cut it open, but we're gonna use the entire bag. That might sound like a lot, it's really not. It cooks down, and it just adds so much flavor. I find even my 
10 year old and 12 year old daughters love spinach after it's cooked down in the crock pot, which they would probably die if they heard me say they love spinach, but I have a chicken Alfredo recipe they love, and I don't think they realize how much extra flavor the spinach adds. So I'm gonna use the entire bag, just kind of eyeball it. It's maybe two to three handfuls in each bag. And we're gonna use fresh squeezed lemon juice. Does anybody love saving money? <laughs> can, I, can I raise both hands? Because these recipes are very affordable. So I told you that they're simple, not having a lot of ingredients, and they're also just very budget friendly. When I bought the ingredients for the recipes today, I spent $96. I did not use any coupons. I I bought like expensive meats, <laughs> like really. So you could definitely save more if you're good at shopping sales or like I said, using coupons, you could save even more money. But I had to prep for today's class. So I spent $96 that works out to only $8.05 per meal or less than $2 per serving. I mean, that is like a great, great deal. I can tell you my husband and I went away last week and we were spending like 40 to $50 to go to the restaurant to eat. And that, that wasn't even, that it was no alcohol included. That was just on food and it was worth it and we had a really great time. So it's not, not saying don't go out to eat, you absolutely should. I'm just saying if you can then balance that with also cooked meals at home, it's such an easy way to then save money. I've heard that Oh, the average American household spends $3,000 a year eating out. So even if you split that in half, you could save 1,500. Maybe you save a quarter of that. It'd be $750. I don't know. I'm sure my family spends more than that. It's really expensive to take a family of seven out to eat or even to order pizza, Chinese food. It adds up. But anytime I'm able to cook at home, it's just a really easy way to save money. So we have our lemon juice in this recipe. We're gonna add some minced garlic. I love using minced garlic in this recipe because if you're not peeling and chopping garlic, it's just another easy way to save time. These meals are just coming together like that. I'm gonna add olive oil. It's a quarter cup total for the recipe. So I guess I'll just eyeball it. I have written on the recipe that a quarter cup is four tablespoons. So you could do like two tablespoons in one, two tablespoons in another but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then we need our seasonings, which are parsley. This is such a flavorful meal. Um, I would probably serve this like over spaghetti. You could slice or shred the chicken after cooking and serve it with spaghetti, maybe top with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Would be so good. I always include suggested side dishes with the recipes, so you'll find that in the freebie that's on my blog and my membership site. So that way you know just what I would recommend eating on the side and normally they're pretty simple side dishes which is nice and maybe like affordable time saving simple things. So I'm gonna add some basil, Just these are just dried herbs, some dried basil. And then we also need salt and pepper. Let's go ahead. Add that to our bag. This is another recipe from my membership site and I have some stories of other people who have made it. So let me get my pepper in and then I'll tell you what Leslie had to say. So Leslie said, hi Kelly, I'm so happy with your freezer meals. This chicken recipe is the fourth recipe I've tried. I have to say these recipes are absolutely wonderful. Even my husband who tends to be a bit fussy with what I cook loves them. I'm retired, there's just the two of us at home, so two days meals with leftovers. It just makes my life so much easier not having to try and figure out dinner all the time. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. Thank you, Leslie, that's great. I love they're working for you. And then Beverly said, I'm new to freezer meals. I became a pro with your site. My adult grandson and I prepare the meals most of the time and we love making this first batch of meals. Last night we had the lemon chicken with baby spinach and served it over spaghetti topped with Parmesan cheese. It was very good. Cannot wait to try the others, some of which are planned for next week. Thank you, Kelly, for great meals. Thanks, Beverly. And thank you to anyone who like tries the recipes, leaves comments. It's so great for me to read how you're making them, if you're liking them. And then for anyone else who wants to make them, they can then read if you've made any changes or how they're working for you. 
Let's go ahead and do recipe number five, and that is our three bean chili. Now this is a vegetarian recipe, but I do include in the recipe an option to add ground beef. So I'm gonna make it vegetarian, but if you wanna add a pound of ground beef, you will just split that between the freezer bags. Yes, it's added raw. <laughs> Trust me, if you've never done it before, it's gonna work out great, I promise you. You know, I've made these for 10 years. I've made thousands of meals. I'm not, I wouldn't steer you wrong, okay? So let's start with the beans, which are light red kidney beans, and it calls for two cans. We'll do one in each bag. My family loves chili. I'm a big fan of, of chili and crockpot meals that have a lot of flavor. Anybody else? <laughs> Maybe, okay, have you heard crockpot recipes are bland? They're mushy, they all taste the same. <laughs> Maybe you feel that way. Well, I'm gonna tell you these meals are not gonna be like that. I hope you're seeing me add the ingredients and you're seeing how many spices I are, I'm adding. They actually taste good, which is really important because who wants to meet, <laughs> who wants to eat meals that don't taste good? I mean, you can save money, you can eat healthy, but at the end of the day, they have to taste good. Whenever I'm writing new recipes, I always think, would I make this again? And would I serve this to guests? And I want those to be like, yes, 100% yes. And then it's like, all right, I can share this recipe with other people. The beans in this recipe are three bean chili, are the light red kidney beans, the pinto beans, and the black beans. They were all drained and rinsed. I did that before class. I actually taught a class once when my can opener broke. <laughs> So I learned my lesson. I opened my cans ahead of time. Uh, now we have a petite diced tomatoes. These are not drained. They're just, the can's just open. I'm just eyeballing, dumping it between the bags. And this is a great example of why splitting the recipes into two bags is so great. Because what would you do if you were making a half batch? What would you do with the other half of this can? Or what would you do with the other half of this tomato sauce or the beans? It's just a really easy way to make meals with less servings. And like I said, then you end up with double the meals, which is always a win. If you wanted to, you could make the original recipe too. I mean, I don't want to discourage you from doing that. If you want to make the original recipe with four to six servings, you can do that. Then you could just eat the leftovers for lunch or you can freeze the leftovers just like any other meal. That's totally up to you, but sometimes you get sick of eating the same thing all the time. All right, so we have all our beans, our tomato sauce, our diced tomatoes. We need garlic. So I'm using that minced garlic. I tried to use that in all the recipes today. So if you buy this, you're getting your money's worth. And again, we're just not getting that garlic all over our hands. You can, but you don't have to. And then our seasonings are, okay, there's a little bit of light brown sugar, chili powder, cumin, and crushed red pepper flakes. I'm going to go ahead and dump that into the bags. And then the day of cooking, you do add a little bit of water to this. It just thins out the tomato sauce. And if you're going to cook in the Instant Pot, it adds enough liquid to reach pressure and not burn. Those instructions are, of course, on your recipe. And if you print the labels, that's on here too, which is great if you have anyone else who's making these meals, if you have a spouse, if you have a teen, if you're giving this away to someone else. How wonderful would it be to keep six for yourself, six to someone else? they would know exactly how to make this. Now, these can be made in the gallon size bags or in the smaller quart bags. These are my reusable freezer bags. I only have the gallon size. So I'm making them in those. I'll just fold them in my freezer. But if you want to use regular Ziploc bags, the quart size work. The only thing I'll tell you is if you make the chili with meat, you need the gallon size bag. The meat will not fit with all the beans, with all the tomato sauce in the quart bag. It's really tight. I, I tested it. <laughs> I tested out everything for you, trust me. <laughs> I just wanna make sure that it's like a huge success for you when you make these meals like the very, very first time. So Pamela had made this. She said, I'm making this again. My picky hubby really liked this. I did too. It's a winner in my books. Easy to thanks. Thanks, Pamela. Someone had just messaged me on Instagram the other day and said this is their favorite recipe. So a really good vegetarian one, and you have the option to add meat. I, oh, I wanted to point out that there's a lot of variety in these meals, so when I say people think crockpot meals all taste the same, I made sure to pick recipes today with a variety of seasonings and Italian and um, American influences. I have a ton of Mexican recipes on my website, just a lot of variety and also with the side dishes and suggested side dishes so that 
If you wanna eat these every night, you totally could. You don't have to. I have, it's fine. These meals will last in the freezer up to three months. So you could eat six of them next week and then you can wait a whole other month, two months, three months to eat the others and they would still taste great, no problem. Um, but you can eat them if you want every night. <laughs> they, they all taste different. Let's move on to our last recipe. This is our easy chicken cacciatore, just a really simple one. And this calls for pasta sauce. I'm gonna use Prego. I tested this recipe last night, I used, or last week, and I tried a different brand and it was also really good. So I would use just whatever kind of like marinara sauce is your favorite or whatever's on sale. <laughs> I've bought it at other, other stores like Aldi or Walmart to save money and those all work really well. And then we need to add some Italian seasoning. It's one tablespoon total. Actually, for my measuring spoon, this is a half tablespoon. Isn't that cool? This is like the, maybe the first time I'm ever using the half tablespoon. But I'm gonna use that to add it to my bags. We need an onion, so we're down to the, the bottom of our frozen diced onions. We're using the last of that bag, and I'm just gonna split it between my two freezer bags. I hope you see how quickly these meals are coming together. Like, it's so great, right? It's like, okay, I can do this. Maybe when you sign up for class, you're like, I don't know, we'll see if this is really as easy as that lady says. And I hope now you're like, she was right. <laughs> and we're gonna add our veggies. I have a bell pepper that, again, we're gonna split this between our two bags because what would you do with half a green pepper besides maybe eat it raw? And I'm just gonna chop it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna add this to my bag. This recipe is really good, serve with spaghetti. Um, I, again, I would top it with some Parmesan cheese. You could also make this over zoodles. Have you made zucchini noodles? You could use one of those simple little spiralizers and you saute them. That would be a really easy way to get some extra veggies or if you're, eating less um, processed carbs. The zoodles are really good. My husband and I love those. That would be good too. So you, you cut up the chicken or shred it after cooking. And this recipe does call for a zucchini. These were washed, I washed these before class, but I'm leaving the skin on them. And whenever I'm chopping them, I'm really just going for like a bite size chop. It doesn't have to be any smaller than that doesn't have to be diced per se, just chopped is good. And then whenever I'm done chopping these, I'm gonna start adding the meat to my freezer bag. So I waited to do that until the end. That way my knife only touches the meat once, it only touches my cutting board once. We don't have to worry about cross contamination. My hands only touch it once, I'm gonna wash my hands when I'm done. So that's just a really easy way to kind of work in an assembly line and then do all the meat. All right, so the first is the chicken breasts for our chicken noodle soup. All I'm going to do is like trim the fat off of the breasts because they can be, sh I just shred them after cooking. So you don't have to dice the chicken, you just add the breasts whole. Like I said, I'm just gonna trim the fat. This package has about a pound and a half of chicken, which is what is in the recipe. It has three chicken breasts, so I'm gonna put one and a half breasts in each bag. These look pretty good. I'm just being picky, kind of picky about not wanting fat on my meat when I freeze it. So I think it's worth taking just an extra second to get it all out. All right. And then we have our meat for our pot roast. Now, to get two pounds, it calls for two pounds, I had to buy two packages. So I'm gonna, just gonna put one in one freezer bag and one into the other. Again, I am gonna trim the big fat off the sides. I bought, let's see, I'll tell you what I bought. I bought a top round steak, a boneless. The recipe called for a, beef, a boneless beef chuck roast, my recipe, but when I went to the grocery store this time, I just thought it looked really fatty. I didn't think the roasts at the store looked that good, so I decided 
to get this and I put that in the recipe notes, like some options. So beef chuck roast is so good for pot roast. And I also use that type of meat for the beef barley stew. But if you go to the store and it doesn't look good, I wanted to give you just a couple of other options of what you could use. There we go. I actually ordered all of my groceries online for this class besides the beef. So I wanted to look at the roasts myself just to make sure, like I said, I. I just am a little picky about it. I ordered the chicken breast, but the beef, it was like, I want to make sure, I want to look at the fat of it. I want to see how it looks because I wasn't sure what I would like, but I ordered everything else. It took less than 10 minutes. I was actually, I was like timing myself. I was like, oh, I want to say that's right in the class. It took less than 10 minutes. That grocery list is so simple. Like I said, it's organized by aisle. If you go to the grocery store or if you order online, it's just so quick. Um, so easy to do. Nothing better than a pre pre-made shopping list. So I'm going to add my other roast to my bag. And then we have our beef barley stew. And for that, I'm going to use a London broil. Again, I wrote this on your recipe. I really was just picking which boneless beef roast I thought looked the best. The chuck roast just had a lot of like little bits of fat kind of running through it. And I thought it would be hard to trim hard to trim. So I'm trying to just kind of quickly, I'm not doing my best here, but try to like quickly trim off the fat. And I'm for the beef barley stew, I'm going to cube the beef to add it to my freezer bag. I think it really does save time to add the meat at the end because like I said, can you imagine if I had to cut my knife or, or if I had to clean my knife, my cutting board, my hands? in between every meal. That'd be a pain. It's just nice that it's done. I wanted to tell you, oh, let me tell you about my, while well, I'm cutting this, about the bags and stands. I am using our reusable freezer bags. These are our brand, Family Freezer. <laughs> Believe it or not, I tested so many freezer bags for years when they started making these reusable ones. And I just couldn't find any that I liked. They were really awkward sizes. They didn't work for my freezer meals. A lot of them were too small. They were really expensive, a lot of bags, but I mean, I think they're worth it, but they, some of them were really expensive, like $20 a bag. So my husband and I like went on this crazy adventure of finding a manufacturer who can make these bags for us, ordering them, selling them on our site. If you want to buy them, you totally can. They're back in stock right now. Sometimes they do go out of stock, but We've been trying to be better about ordering really big batches. We had no idea they were gonna be as popular. <laughs> I think the first time we ordered them, they sold out in a week. We were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we need to order so many more. So we've been trying now to order as many as we can at once so that they're in stock. And the link is in your freebie. So after class, when I send you the freebie, <laughs> the, you'll have the link where if you wanna buy the reusable freezer bags, they're made from like a PIVA material, food grade, food safe material. It's not plastic, it's BPA free. They don't leak, They, which is amazing. Uh, they don't make a mess. They're just really easy to use. And since they are gallon size, they just work perfectly for my recipes where they don't have to be adapted in any way. They're basically exactly like a Ziploc bag. And then whenever you go to cook a meal, you just dump the food out of it and then you do just quickly wash it. So I just use warm water. I turn it inside out. I rinse it with soap and water, leave it inside out to dry. It, it takes like 60 seconds. I mean, maybe you're getting a sense of me of I'm pretty simple, like no fuss. <laughs> I'm not, do not doing anything complicated. And that's very true for these bags too. Just really simple trying to cut up this beef kind of tiny for the stew. As I've been cutting my meat, I've been, I have one hand that's like getting messy with the meat and then I'm keeping the, my knife hand actually clean. So that's how I'm able to grab the bags. I'm trying to be very strategic here, but oh, and the stands too. So what I'm using is these uh, baggy stands to hold the bags upright. Now they're not necessary. You don't need anything fancy to make these freezer meals. You need a knife, you need a cutting board, measuring spoons. I mean, that's it. So easy. But if you do want 
anything. These stands are so great. I remember times when I was making freezer meals. There was one time I was using an entire jar of pasta sauce. I dumped it in and that bag slumped and just poured all over my kitchen floor. I wanted to cry. I probably did cry. And I just thought there had to be a way. There has to be something that can hold them up. So we found we found a manufacturer for these stands and they are just like a lifesaver. And you just use them over and over again. And they actually can be adjusted. Maybe whenever my hands are clean, I'll show you, but the height can be adjusted so that if you do use them with a smaller quart size bag, that that's like no problem. They can be adjusted to fit them. But they really, maybe once you get into meals and once you're making them, I do recommend them just for keeping, keeping everything upright. All right, our chicken. What's left? Our chicken cacciatore and our lemon chicken with baby spinach. Just gonna kind of make sure this is, yeah, this is pretty good. And again, this has three breasts, so I'm gonna do one and a half in each bag. Looks good. There we go. All right, one more. These meals, so the when I was talking about saving money and how budget friendly they are, there are frequently sales on meat. So one time I went to the grocery store and all natural chicken breasts were buy one, get one free. And I remember thinking, okay, I could buy 10 of these. I could save, I think it was $45. Then I'd have to eat chicken for the next 10 nights. <laughs> and that just seemed like so much. But then I thought, well, what about all my freezer meals? So if I made them into freezer meals, I could just eat them over the next three months and still save that $45. And really, you know how quickly these meals come together. It doesn't take that much time and save money. So it's a really great, anytime meat is on sale, that's probably the easiest way to save money with freezer meals, but also anytime you do bulk shopping, like Costco or Sam's Club, that's also good. So I'm just adding my chicken to my last meal. It's the chicken cacciatore recipe. I'm adding the breast whole, so I will either shred them or uh, slice them after cooking. And after this, I am just gonna take my cutting board over to my sink. I'm gonna wash my hands, so give me just one minute to get cleaned up. All right, and then we just have to seal these bags and add them to the freezer. I'll show you how I seal them. So I normally seal them so they're about two inches away from the end, and then I roll them to get the rest of the air out and finish the seal. And that way they're just really, almost like a vacuum seal. You can make this flat. It's a really easy way to just put it right in your freezer. Let me show you with these bags. So if this was a quart size bag, you could lower these arms and it would hold the quart size bag or they can go, they're really adjustable for any size. See, and then they also go flat. You can store them in drawers. And you can wash them in the top rack of the dishwasher. So I'm just gonna seal this one. I cleaned out my freezer, just my regular fridge freezer before class. So I'm gonna add all of these to that freezer, I really think they will fit. So if you need more space in your freezer, first step, clean it out. <laughs> anything expired, anything old, I'm telling you, I'm giving you permission, throw it away. You need to make space for your new meals. And then if there's a lot of stuff in there that you really love, maybe eat that next week for dinner. Say, okay, I have a pork roast, I'm gonna make something with pork. Or I have some chicken breast, I'll make a chicken recipe. I have some frozen peas, what do I like to eat with peas? And make a meal plan based on that to clean out your freezer so then you can fit these in there. They're really not that big. Whether you make them in the gallon bags or in the quart size bags, I really think you won't need a whole lot of space for these meals. We have an extra refrigerator freezer in our garage. We use that for like drinks, water, soda pop and stuff. We use that freezer. And then at some point we did end up investing in a chest freezer 
Obviously I have a freezer business, so <laughs> that makes sense. But we do have freezer space. Uh, but it's not necessary. For many years and years and years, I was just using my regular freezer or even my extra fridge freezer. So you could either do these flat, you could fold them under if you're using the gallon size, or even use those smaller quart size bags. Whenever I use the disposable bags, I recommend, I like the name brand ones. So I like Ziploc or Hefty. I normally find that they work better than other brands. They don't leak or, I hate when bags get holes in them or it's the worst that they leak sauce all over your freezer. That is why I have grown to love these re reusable bags. I just think they work really well. So after this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these into my freezer and then I just want to show I'm gonna do a quick demo of my membership site and I'll show you too how to cook these meals in a smaller slow cooker or a smaller instant pot but if you haven't seen my membership site yet I want to show you how it works it's seriously one of a kind it's amazing for making these meals and it's one of those things you have to see it to really understand how it works I know a lot of members are here for the class <laughs> but it'd be great for you too just to get a refresher of all of the features and see how it can be used. I'll show you just, just really quickly like how I would pick my next group of freezer meals if I was going to make them. And you're not gonna believe just how simple it is, how helpful. So let me grab my other mic, grab my other computer and just actually show you how it works. This is Family Freezer VIP. <laughs> You can log in to see all of my recipes that can be frozen raw. And the great thing is 12 new recipes are added every month. And you can see them here. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Uh, let's go into an individual recipe so I can show you how they look. Let's go in here. And you'll be able to see, uh, again, the little photo and then the ingredients. These are all really simple, simple recipes that tell you exactly how to freeze them later and then how to cook them. This is a crock pot and a, or a grill recipe. I have a bunch of Instant Pot, uh, a lot of crock pot mostly, but also air fryer we're adding and uh, so many options. Full nutritional info and a note section if you make the recipe and wanna make a note for next time. I wanna show you one of my favorite features of VIP and that is our search. Oh my gosh, okay, so. We have predefined filters. So those are these little circle icons where I could look at all the crock pot recipes or the instant pot, chicken, beef, vegetarian, gluten-free, just these really quick predefined filters. You can also do keyword. So let's say I have a red pepper that I bought at the grocery store or maybe my family really loves red peppers. You could type that in and then go ahead and see all the recipes that would feature red peppers. But the best search is our advanced search. This is it right here. I'll go back to the homepage so you can see when you're on the homepage where you would find it. It's this advanced search and filter. And if you click on it, you can filter by diet, dairy-free, diabetic, gluten-free, ketogenic, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, whole food, which is like Whole30. We have my cookbooks, if you're familiar with them. We have cooking method. We're, like I said, we're just starting to add air fryer. We have tons of crock pot. We have grill, instant pot, oven, and stove top. Those are those 15 minute meals when you're really short on time. Protein, beef, chicken, lamb, that's new. Pork, seafood, we're adding more seafood, turkey, vegetarian. And cuisine, American, Asian, Caribbean, Indian, Italian, Mediterranean, Mexican, Middle Eastern, North African, so many options. You could eat this every night of the week. And online classes. So if you've attended my classes or even this class and you want to see where the recipes are and make a new shopping list, you could do that here. And maybe the coolest thing is that you can you can combine these filters. <laughs> Whoa, okay, so let's say we want a gluten-free recipe that can be cooked in the crock pot and features chicken. You can combine those and then search and find like the perfect recipe that you know your family is going to love. So let me show you some other features that I like. One of them are these recipe collections. Now, these are groups of recipes. I think of them as my, maybe like my recipe playlists. And everyone gets this favorite 
favorite recipes collection when they join, these are ones that I've created. So I created a summer seasonal one, some that I make when chicken is on sale, when ground beef is on sale. I did a vegetarian Indian one for my very best friends and meals to make next month. So these are my next group of meals to make. I'll show you how it works in here. You have the recipes, you can adjust the servings if necessary, you could do more or less. And then you can, this is where you would access a shopping list. So after I pick all my meals for next month, I'm just hitting this shopping list and it auto generates like seriously one second, the full shopping list organized by section of the grocery store, everything that I need. And if that wasn't enough, you can edit it. So let's say I'm going to make chocolate chip pancakes for my kids next month. It's like, okay, let's put chocolate chips on there or let's scroll down. I'm going to show you exactly how I use this. I would even add a group. So let's say we add household items because I like to have one shopping list. I wanted to go to the grocery store one time and buy one thing. So let's get our tissues and add an item. Let's get toilet paper. <laughs> and then I won't forget anything at the store. So I just go back to the top and I can stop editing this. I can save it. So then if I come back on here tomorrow, next week, next month on my phone, whatever it is that is saved. And I will show you how to print it. So you can go ahead and print the shopping list. It has all the recipes, items. You could be crossing off items here or on the previous screen. But if you have some of these on hand and you don't need them, you can cross those off. And you can also print the recipes because you're going to need to know what you're making. These are really printer friendly and they even include the label. You can cut here. It says cut label here. This would print on a separate piece of paper and you could just tape this on your freezer bag, but it would tell you exactly what's in the bag and then how to cook it. So let's go back to the main page so I can just show you a couple things. This is your account section. It has your account info and it has all my ebook downloads. You get free access to all of those and save the best for last family freezer TV because this is a full class library. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> All of my classes that I've taught, these are videos that you can watch on demand anytime you want. And if you click inside, you will be able to watch the video here. This is where you can play it. And it has a list of the recipes, even a link directly to the recipes. No checking your email. It's right here. It has all the recipes and the full shopping list and their printable labels and literally everything you need at your fingertips. Like <laughs> amazing, right? If you haven't joined yet, all you need to do is go to thefamilyfreezer.com slash VIP, thefamilyfreezer.com slash VIP. And this is where you can join for a $97 sign up fee that is good for one year. So you can use this over and over and over again to make freezer meals during the year. I mean, how, how many times would you have to even use it to make it worth it? Like once? I mean, maybe twice. I save so much money when I'm planning these meals. So, okay. You can read more about VIP and what I showed you in my little demo, just all the new recipes every month, the full class library, the filters, the labels. You can read what our members are really loving about VIP. They love maybe some things that are even a little different from how I use it. Um, we have people who we have, who are retired, who are making recipes for their children, who are making them for their friends. You can read about all the new recipes every month, all of our VIP features, the family freezer TV section, the eBooks, downloads, printables, and hopefully answers to every question you have. Let's go ahead and click join now. I want to explain. Okay. So it's our $97 sign up fee, one time fee to sign up. You use this as many times as you want the first year. If you want to continue using it after that, it's $49 a year. Now this would be billed after 365 days. You would get that charged to your account. However, 
You can cancel anytime. I showed you in the demo, you have an account section, you go to my account, you cancel it, no problem. We do not wanna charge you if you're not using it, of course. We only want people who are loving the site, using it, because that's when it's so worth it. Like I said, it just pays for itself, it's such a good deal. I want everyone who can, who would benefit from this to be able to use it and to be able to afford it. Since you're joining my class today, I have a coupon code for you. So you can use coupon code double up here and that will save 20% off the sign up fee. It brings it down to $77 and 60 cents. This coupon code is good for two days only. So if you're able to join today and tomorrow, use double up save 20%, join for only $77.60. This is such a good deal. If you joined previously and paid 97, don't feel bad about it. You're still saving so much money. If you can't join now, just pay the 97 later. It's still a great deal. And if you can join now, please join today or tomorrow. I know someone's gonna email me next week, ask if I have some kind of sale or coupon code. Unfortunately, no, we're only able to do this when we offer a class. So join for your 7760. Let's go to our proceed to check out because you just enter your info, you're gonna do your credit card. Okay, here's what I wanna point out. One, your email address. This is where I'm gonna send you all my tips. So make sure you do the correct email address. Use your username and your account password. This is how you're gonna log into VIP. So these things are important. Write them down. <laughs> I don't want you to forget them. I want you to log into the site and use it and love it. So write down your username, write down your password, double check that email address, and then click sign up now and you can check your email and get started. Okay, let's do a cooking demo. I wanna show you how to make these meals. And I'm gonna show you, all of them can be cooked in the Instant Pot or Crock Pot. I have two Crock Pots here I can show you. If you have a Crock Pot at home, sorry I keep calling them Crock Pot, I know a lot of people call them slow cookers. They are slow cookers. So, you say Crock Pot, I say cr slow cooker, same thing. But if you have one at home, I would use whatever you have. You do not need to buy a new one. And who wants to have their kitchen full of these devices? Like, I don't have any space for anything extra. I'm sure you don't either. So whatever you have, you should use. If you are in the market for a new one, I'll give you some options. But use whatever you have. But here's how it works. So let's say we're going to cook a meal for dinner tonight. I just grabbed my beef barley stew. This is from my freezer. It's morning. I wake up, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? And I'm like, oh, I made those freezer meals. <laughs> yes, go me. So I grab my bag. Now the slow cookers that I have, you can add meat frozen, so it doesn't have to be thawed. If your specific model needs to be thawed, read your manual, Google it, then you might need to thaw this overnight in the refrigerator or just thaw it in water. This is a small, these are small meals. They would thaw so quickly, or you get them out of the bag and thaw them in the microwave. That'd be fine too. But mine, you can add them all frozen. Um, all you need to do to make this in the crock pot is maybe run this under water just to make sure none of the spices stick. We dump it in. It says to add three cups of beef broth. So I already bought that. When I shared the cost of my ingredients, I had already bought those. That was all included. I just pour in my three cups of beef broth and set it. Now I included in the recipes your cooking instructions. I find that if you have a smaller model of crock pot, it, they do cook slower. So like this little three quart one, I was cooking meals, I think 10 to 12 hours on low, or on high five to seven hours. So that, I found that actually for both of these. This is three quarts, this is three and a half quarts. They needed longer, where my big one is so high powered, it cooks um, chicken in like three to four hours, or beef in six to eight hours. So I would just cook it whatever you're used to. You know your crock pot, you use a typical time of cooking, I would do that. And then if you don't know, I would follow my instructions because they've been tested time and time again to make sure they cook perfectly. But just really simple, and like I said, on, the, in, on this label, it tells you how to cook them. If I was gonna cook this in the Instant Pot, if you don't have an Instant Pot, you can buy, this is a three quart. So if you're thinking, oh, I've kind of wanted one, but it's another big thing I have to fit in my kitchen. <laughs> like the three quart is a great size. I'd recommend it, but you can use your crock pot for all these meals. You don't have to buy anything new. 
and the cooking time is the same in this little three quart or in the big six quart. I have both, <laughs> I'm, I'm testing them all, okay? But the cooking time is exactly the same. It just says add your frozen meal to your Instant Pot with three cups of beef, beef broth. So I have to take off your lid. I'm dumping this in, it's all frozen. I add my beef broth and then I put the lid back on. I pressure cook this on low pressure for 30 minutes. So pressure cook, and then I would make sure it's on low pressure, and then I would just, I put in 30 minutes, I press start, so simple, I don't even use all the other buttons, and then I do a natural release, makes the meat really tender, remove the bay leaf, and then just break apart the beef. So I even on this, it says remove the bay leaf, that little reminder, although I have heard sometimes people say whoever gets the bay leaf in their bowl is lucky, so if you forget to, leave, to take out the bay leaf, maybe it's just like, it's their lucky day. So that's how you would cook this meal. They all have their instructions, super simple, so easy to make in these appliances. And then your day is just so easy too, because you do not have to worry about dinner. It's like dinner is done. Maybe serve this with some fresh bread and you're, you're just like feeling so good that you have a healthy homemade meal with uh, so little work. And I have some final shout outs. I just want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to be here. I really appreciate you. Kimberly had sent me a message. I've now watched a few of your classes. After the first one, I bought the membership. I made my first group of meals. I split them into two bags since I'm just by myself. I made over 100 meals for $225. Then in July, I moved from Pennsylvania to Alabama. I had a few meals left in my freezer, so I gave them to my son and his girlfriend. They loved them. Thank you so much for this incredible plan. Thanks, Kimberly. And Zoe said, thank you for being a great resource. I attended your live class earlier this week and was so happy for the coupon code. I went out and bought the ingredients for 10 meals right away. We have them because we're a small family. Everything is tasted amazing. It's expanding my horizons. My husband and one-year-old love the food too. Thank you. Thanks, Zoe. I really appreciate that. So if you have any other questions, please email me, respond to my email, tell me your questions, tell me your own success stories. I would love to hear them. I can't tell you how many emails, how many messages I get a day, and they really just motivate me to like keep going, keep sharing them. So thank you for that, and I appreciate you coming today. I will see you later.